Thank you, Catherine. And the top of my note says introduce self, and I don't think I need to do that again, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll move, move on from those. Um, so, yeah, I'm very pleased to be here to help Catherine hand out our annual Pringle and Janey Awards today. So these awards recognise people and groups who've made a real difference to people severely affected by mental illness. So they're a very important event in our, in our calendar. Um, Catherine's going to present the awards and we're going to invite the, the winners, um, if they're here, to, to, to join us up on stage to, to receive them. So we're going to start with the 2023 Pringle Awards, which celebrate outstanding achievements and contributions across our organisation. Um, and first up, we have this year's winner for our Brill Pringle Award for Arts, who's Steph Collins. I'm going to say a little bit about each of the, each of the winners um, and then we'll perhaps show a little bit of their, their, their work and then, and then invite them up if, if they're here. So Steph has always been a passionate artist and she fell ill at 16 and was unable to complete her A-levels. Instead, she went to college to study graphic design and illustration. She's since been diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder. In the last 10 years, she's taken up embroidery. She finds it a relaxing activity to focus her mind on when things are going on in their head. We're just going to take a quick look at a winning entry by the uh, by the VT. So take a look at the screens around you. So isn't that fantastic? I think we should have a round of applause there for a few things. And Steph is about to start a master's in illustration at Falmouth, and is also working on an illustrated guide to electroconvulsive therapy, a treatment she's had. The guide's designed to take away the stigma and fear of the treatment, and she's been working with staff at the hospital. When complete, the guide's going to be made available for, for oral patients. So please welcome the winner of the Bill Pringle Award for Art, Steph Collins. <laughs> Well done, Steph. So our second award is the Bill Pringle Award for Poetry. And the winner of the second award is Angela Raccarelli. As someone with autism and complex mental health difficulties, Angela uses poetry as a form of expressing the way she feels and has escaped from the battles in her head. Her poetry submission expresses the sense of exclusion she battled with every day at school. She felt there was a lack of awareness at her schools of how to navigate neurodivergence, making it especially hard for children with autism and ADHD to feel included in the school environment. And Joella feels that poetry is a natural form of expression for her and very therapeutic. And we're going to be really, really lucky because we're going to hear a little extract from her winning submission. Insomniac, waking up already tired from my debilitating anxiety, melatonin after melatonin and still no satiety. My thoughts keep me up, up they keep me, overthinking every little action I made and how that was perceived, jumping to conclusions or overgeneralizing or my binary perspective, it kills me. And in the end, it's the worst I believe. Indecisive debating whether or not to go to school, a daily occurrence. For starters, the people are a clear deterrence. How will I function when I'm already drained and the sounds of people talking will definitely be a pain? I think of art and how I will miss it if I stay. And that fuels me, giving me strength for the day. Wow. Um, and you can read the whole poem, um, which will be published on our website tomorrow. Um, but please welcome the author and the win winner of the Bill Pringle Award for Poetry, Angela Raccarelli. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well done, Angela. Thank you. Next award. So we're going to turn to the Pringle Award for Group of the Year. And our winner this year is the Derbyshire Borderline Personality Disorder Support Group. The group was created by Sue, who after coming out of a four-year crisis was looking for a specialised BPD support group she could have been a part of. She didn't feel that the general mental health groups were focused enough for her diagnosis, so she created her own group in 2017. Sue believes that her mental health crisis was worse because of the lack of support, and she didn't want anyone else to go through what she did. The group established four venues, and these had to be shut during the pandemic like so many other places. So they went online and expanded massively through Zoom. They now have over 350 users, 13 of whom are overseas. So the group's gone international. Um, there we go. Today, they have a mix of online groups and local in-person events and activities such as coffee mornings and bowling, which is funded by external, external funders. The group encourages members to create their own networks, and Sue hopes that the group is just the start of smaller networks that develop and grow within themselves. The group also has email groups, newsletters, and newsletters for members to share their creative work, information, and support. As well as this, a key part of the development of the group has been creating WhatsApp groups for people with specific needs, another example of how they've extended their reach to more people. So please welcome Sue Re Wheatcroft, who is here with John Jarvis, to collect the Pringle Award for Group of the Year. going to say a few words yeah, aren't you right. yeah of course yeah. absolutely yes so here's a microphone for you so thank you thank you um i just wanted to thank rethink really because they've gave us so much support over the years it's amazing but in particular um at local level the derbyshire recovery and peer support service and you usually get that wrong um which is uh which represents rethink in derbyshire has been incredible, especially um, Mark Hudson and Rob Passy, who have just made sure we're okay all the time. Um, if I can just say something about the, the value of support groups, um, community groups, the, as we all know, um, statutory services are lacking these days, and I really don't know what we'd do without the voluntary sector. It's amazing. Um, so. Thank you again. Thank you again, Sue, and, and, and well done to you and, and your group. I couldn't have put it by myself. Um, thank you. Um, so we're going to move on to our fourth award. Um, and the fourth award is the Pringle Award for Service of the Year. And the winner of this award is John Hall Wellness Gardens. So John Hall Wellness Gardens has been open for a number of years, but the service underwent a big change in April 2022, so that's last year, isn't it, after the group lost funded provided by local commissioners. The service is moving to a model which sees it funded by donations, grants, and income generated by, by the gardens. Before, the garden was utilised for a couple of days a week, but that's nothing compared to the scale it's used now. Since the change, it's been all systems go. The community garden is open to all members of the community, but has an emphasis on supporting and helping people with their mental health and well-being. The service feels lucky to have the freedom and capacity to support people in this way and to try new ways of, of working. The garden has over 30 volunteers who want to give back to the community. They're encouraged to take a lead and choose the direction in which the garden will run and progress. The garden holds plant sales, craft activities, peer support groups, short walking groups, and long wellness walking groups. The aim is to provide a service that, that accommodates all. And indeed, I visited the service myself last year. Um, I've still got some plants in the garden, actually, that I purchased um, when, when, when I visited the service. And I really would encourage anyone who is passing through Leek um, or in and around Staffordshire to go and have a look because it's, um, it's, it's, it's probably unique in terms of kind of what we do. And it is a, is a fabulous place to, to go. So if, you, if you're around the area, then I really would encourage you to, to go and take a look for yourself. Um, so I'm delighted to welcome Mark Woodley and his colleagues to the stage to collect the Pringle Service of the Year Award on behalf of John Hall Wellness Gardens. Well, 
you're welcome. Be good. Thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, voting for us. It means a lot. Um, I've only been working uh, in the garden for two months, and I understand why you voted for us. Um, Sue and Nikki and Alban and the staff that were there before I, uh, I turned up um, have done an amazing job in, in the garden. Like um, Mark said, we've got over 30 volunteers, friends of the garden that come in and give their time to us and make the gardens really special for the public to come in. And uh, we have no end of people coming in saying how wonderful and peaceful and um, a special place that they can come and, and enjoy and um, have the foundations of their well-being improved. And that's what we keep striving to do. And this is just the start of our journey. We've, um, we're expanding. Like we're I'm going to have a community cafe um, that's all been funded for us and um, a classroom so we can um, really expand everything that we offer at the garden. And, um, and like I said, the staff have been amazing. Um, so this is to them. So thank you. Well done, Mark, and, and, and everyone associated with the service. Um, so finally, for the Pringle Awards, um, we're going to move on to, to Supporter of the Year. And, and I'm delighted to announce that the winner for our Supporter of the Year is Brian Smith, uh, also known as the Walking Man from Bristol. So Brian has been fighting his own mental health battles from a young age, and his personal experience drives his unrelenting passion for mental health advocacy. Diagnosed with depressive psychosis and PTSD, Brian has dedicated his life to making a difference. Brian discovered Rethink Mental Illness Services in 2022. He's had his most recent improvements in his recovery to the support group, which he says helps to balance him out after his diagnosis and is, and I quote, the best recovery I can get. This year, he walked 200 miles from Newquay to Minehead over 15 days, raising almost £1,080 for Rethink Mental Illness. In March 2024, he'll be doing a tandem jump, and the following September, he'll embark on a 192-mile hike spanning three national parks, I'm in England's highest peak, Scarfell Pike, all for the charity. I mean, you're going to fit that in. That's a lot of, uh, a lot of activity, that is, Brian. <laughs> um, so Brian collaborate, collaborates with his registered GP, motivating those battling mental health issues to lead healthier lives. He educates students at his son's school about mental health. He's also writing a book called The Hardest Walk, which shares his journey and lived experience. All proceeds are earmarked for recent mental illness. So I'm delighted to welcome Brian Smith, the walking man of Bristol, who is our Pringle Supporter of the Year. moment I've always said if you're scared and excited at the same time then just go for it it's big enough you can achieve anything you like in life hi ladies and gentlemen I'm almost lost for words even being nominated for the support of the year Pringle Award I'm feeling very humble I'm overwhelmed with gratitude I will continue my walking and talking this journey is just the beginning. It's far from over. And now just to finish off by saying to my small family, supporters and sponsors for sticking by me, I hope this recognition of my work can serve an inspiration to others. Thank you. Absolutely sure you have served as an inspiration, Brian. Thank so um, th th thank you very much. That was um, that was a lovely moment on which to end the, the Pringle Award. So so thank you.